Hey, what's up my fellow carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're gonna to be sharing some tips and tricks with y'all on how to make delicious, tasty, protein-filled, low-fat venison slash deer jerky on your Pit Boss Pro Series Vertical Pellet Smoker. Stick around, because we're gonna to get to that right now. Have you ever smoked jerky? If you haven't, you're about to fall in love with smoked jerky. I used to only make it on a uh, dehydrator and then I got my pellet smoker and I thought, man, let me try to throw a little smoke on that on the smoke setting, see how it does. Does phenomenal. What we've got here today is we've got some deer meat that I have personally butchered. I got a great call from my dad the other day. He had killed a young doe and wanted to know if I wanted some meat. So he gave me a ham and a shoulder. Not a lot you can do with a shoulder. I mean, you can do stuff, but as far as high quality stuff, not so much with the shoulder. What you can do is shred it up, cut it up into thin slices, turn it into jerky. And I took the majority of the ham that he sent me, and I'm gonna do another video coming up, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can you know, be around and get notified when that video pops up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make like a triple decker deer and bacon roast. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. An old man I used to do construction work with taught me about it. And so we're gonna be doing that in an upcoming video. So make sure that you tune in for that. But today we're gonna to be cooking this delicious, thinly sliced, some ham from the rear of the deer, some shoulder meat from the front of the deer, and it's gonna turn out phenomenal. Uh, one of the most important things that you can do is to overnight marinate your jerky. It just makes all the difference in the world to overnight marinate the jerky. And what I like to use for a marinade is something that some of you might be familiar with, some of you might not be familiar with, and that is Dale's seasoning. I prefer the reduced sodium seasoning because I put other aspects on my jerky that have sodium in it. And so you don't wanna have it to where you bite into it and you get the, the burning sensation that you sometimes get when you've got too much salt on your proteins. Let's go ahead and it's, this is super simple. You just wanna do this overnight for around 24 hours. You wanna put a generous amount of Dale seasoning onto the deer. Then you're gonna have a little bit of your choice of Worcestershire sauce. I'm using Lee and Perrins. Lee and Perrins is also gonna act to tenderize the meat a little bit. There's some natural tenderizers in there. And typically, I'm not gonna put this on this jerky, not in this part of the process, but typically I'm gonna go with some crushed red pepper flakes. Great way to add good kick of spice to your deer jerky. But I've got two little girls and they're gonna be wanting to try it. And my three-year-old does not like a spicy. So we don't try not to put too much spicy onto uh, the stuff that she eats directly. But what you can do is once it's done cooking or once you get like two trays, you can sprinkle this onto one tray and not onto the other, which is what I'll be doing because dad, I like it spicy. Then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sprinkling it with a little bit of one of my new favorite seasonings. I'll leave a link to this below. This is Jess Riles Hardcore Carnivore Black. I've also got a brisket video coming up that you're gonna to wanna to stick around for and be using this on this brisket. Turns out amazing. Like the color and the bark is just phenomenal. So stick around, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get alerts when that video comes out as well. I'm gonna to try to have that out in January. But you wanna make sure that you just work the Dales and the Worcestershire into the jerky really nicely. And what we're gonna go ahead and do, just to let some of the sodium from this get into that meat, is we're gonna go ahead and put some of it into the marinade. And then I'll be reapplying this to the deer meat once we get it onto the racks. We're gonna mix this up, let it set overnight, and then we'll be back tomorrow, spread it out, put another layer of seasoning on it and get it onto the smoker. So we'll see y'all tomorrow when we get ready for that. One piece of advice I wanna give you is that you gotta be aware that this jerky is going to soak up a lot of your seasoning. So after a couple hours, or maybe the next tomorrow morning, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna reapply some of this Dale's and some of this Worcestershire into this bowl. I'm gonna remix it and I'm gonna put it back in the fridge. 
because it's going to soak it up and that flavor is just going to go deep, deep, deep into the grains of that meat. That way every bite is just loaded down with flavor and that's what you want with jerky. So first of all, Merry Christmas to everybody. I winded up letting my jerky marinate for 48 hours instead of 24, you know, the holidays and all. And so we're out here on Christmas morning and I have put my jerky into the smoker. And what we're doing is we've got it going at 150 degrees. Some people run it all the way on smoke setting. Some people run it up to 200 degrees or 175. I'm cooking this jerky today at 150. We've got a, a cooling rack filled up with jerky in there. And I'm also going to be doing some jerky on my dehydrator inside for a little bit of a comparison video on flavor and a little bit of comparison video on results. So that's in there and we're going to leave that in there until it's ready. Hard to sort of nail down a time. You know, the more you do it, obviously the more accurate you get. I don't make a ton of jerky on my smoker, but I have made it. And this time I'm expecting it to take at least four hours. So uh, we're going to be pulling this off and showing you all what the end result was here in a little bit. All right, so our jerky has finally finished up and it is uh, phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that right now. I cooked part of the batch on my dehydrator and I cooked part of the batch on my smoker. Same exact marinade, same exact time. They were all in the same bowl. And the flavor that the smoke imparts on this jerky is just fantastic. It, it took about five hours and I cooked it at 150 degrees in the smoker and man, it's just so good. It is just really good. I'm not going to lie. We've already gotten into it a good bit, a good bit. Uh, I've got a piece here that came from the batch in the dehydrator and I've got a piece that came from the batch in the smoker. And one thing that you can notice, I don't know if the camera will do it justice is that the jerky that was in the smoker came out with more of a red tint. A red tint and smoke flavor. And I went a little light on the sodium on this jerky, a little lighter than I normally do. And the stuff that was smoked, the smoke flavor, really compensated for a lot of the sodium. And I think that that's great if you're the type of person that'll sit down and just eat all the jerky in one sitting like I am, if you're not careful. You don't wanna take in all that sodium, so take care of yourself. For those of you that might be wondering what type of dehydrator I use, I use the Game Winner. It comes with about five or six shelves, I think six shelves, and it just allows you to do a whole lot of jerky all at once, but you're not gonna get that smoke flavor that you get off of your pit boss. So keep that in mind. Delicious jerky, no doubt about it. Not everybody enjoys that smoke flavor, but man, I do. And I know you do. So good. And this is all just rough cut, hand cut jerky. Did it myself. It either came from the smaller muscles of a hindquarter or all the muscles of a shoulder. The fortunate part for me was this all came from a young deer. Little tip for you. When you're cooking jerky and you're thinking, man, I don't know how to tell if it's done or not. You do not want it to be crunchy on the dehydrator or the smoker. You do not want that. Because it's gonna continue to dry and stiffen up after you take it off. As it, continue, as it cools down, it's gonna dry up a good bit. And so what you wanna be able to see is you're looking for the meat in the middle to bend and then the meat on the outside to break a little bit. And that's how you sort of know that you're where you need to be as far as the texture is concerned. I like mine mildly overcooked. I like to have chew on a little bit. Some people, you know, make it out of ground burger in, in the tube and squirt it out and they like it that way. That might be the way you like it. With me. I like to have to get a little tug, chew on a little bit, chew that flavor out of it. That's the reason you marinate it at least 24 hours. We ended up going 48 on this and it paid off big time. It's delicious. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, ideas, anything like that, hit me up below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps to support my channel. Consider becoming a subscriber to my channel and if you do, Boom, hit that notification bell. That way you can get notified the next time that I put out some content. My next video that I put out is probably gonna be how to slow smoke a deer hindquarter. That's got all sorts of bacon in it, baby. So make sure that you stick around, check that one out when it comes out, and guess what? I'll see y'all in the next video.